right, you guys, just a quick update from the last video. In order to get this cap all the way on, I had to loosen the servo just a little bit. So I know once this is completed, I'm gonna need to take put loosen the servo, put the cap on, and then tighten the servo back on, and it should be good to go. And the other thing I did, I shortened this wire, because when I initially put it on, it was about this tall, and it was too tall for the body to actually fit over. You can see the wire coming out of the receiver box there. And then this, I believe, is normally for a switch mount for one of Arma's ESCs or the Spectrum ones. But since I'm going to use a Castle one, I didn't need this area. And this particular receiver has two antenna wires, and they need to be perpendicular like this. And so I thought this would have been a perfect spot, or is a perfect spot, to put that other antenna wire. So it's sticking out the side like that. And then I put a washer before putting one of these screws in. <clears throat> so it would actually raise the screw up a little bit. And so now, by screw again. Um, so now the screw only comes down to hold that in place just slightly. So it's not going all the way through. It's not impacting the wire at all. You guys can see, hopefully, didn't need that either. See that it's still nice and free to move around. And then that just curves right in there. So. Other than the pieces that are falling out, <laughs> I think this looks pretty good. So we are continuing this build, and for the motor and ESC, we're actually going to do the XLX2. We're going to look this up, make sure it's not part of a bad batch. It shouldn't be. And then we're also doing the 800 kV Castle 2028 motor. This is actually the same motor that's in the X-Max, so whenever we do that comparison, this will make it a little bit more fair. Let me go ahead and get the XLX2 out of the box and solder up these wires and then we'll get it mounted here. Probably gonna have to use double-sided sticky tape, but we'll make sure everything fits. I'll show you guys what that looks like when I'm done. I forgot to mention, I also got this Practical Proto Solutions switch mount for the XLX2. This goes right underneath the fan, and then they provide longer screws and then two tiny screws to mount right there for the switch. Just doing a quick little test fit. Thinking it's gonna go in just like that. Wires coming across there, batteries connect there. And then I just gotta make sure I don't mount the XLX2 too far over this way. I'm thinking that I go ahead and solder up the wires like I'm supposed to, and then I'll put that down in here, put the double-sided sticky tape down, and then press this into place before pulling the whole thing back out. That way I know for sure I'm not gonna run into any fitment issues later. This one is damaged. Huh. There we go. Good thing we have extras. I'm wondering if these knobs here are actually going to get in the way of it sticking. So if I stick this here, that knob's going to keep that ESC up off of there. So I actually need something that's going to be even higher. Or I can sand down these knobs. Yeah, ignore that. <laughs> Not exactly pretty, but we just needed it to be flat and it's going to be covered up anyways. And of course, now that we got dust all over this, I'm going to need to wipe this down, make sure it's fully clean before we stick the ESC on top of it. Well, there's one last thing I didn't think about when I initially tested this, um, but I need to be able to get to all six of these screws that hold this cap down in order to plug everything in. So with that in mind, this is actually going to shift to the left or the passenger side just a little bit but with this position right here we can still get to all six spots so should be good to go all right so we're not covering every single millimeter but i think that that is going to be 
great surface area for the ESC to sit on. All right, you guys, I'm not going to do this whole next part on camera, but I've got these battery leads out of the way. I know that this is going to go towards the motor, so I've got them over where the motor plug wires are. And then these two um, are just going to go right into the receiver box right here. And then I've got the PPS fan mount, and I'll decide which orientation I want to mount this, but it just goes right underneath this fan. You take these four screws out put this underneath and use the four new screws to put that on and then the two little screws to screw the switch onto here but let me go ahead and take care of that and I'll show you guys what it looks like when it's done don't make the mistake I did don't get everything together and then forget the gasket all right you guys so this is finished let's take a look at it I'm not 100 percent sure if this is how I'm going to route this wire or not but we just got it there for now Here's the switch, and this is where I decided to mount that PPS switch mount. You can see one of the antenna wires coming up there, the other one coming around right here. Antenna, servo wires going in there, and then ESC wires going in right through the lid right up there. So I think it looks really, really nice, really clean, um, and it's a really cool design how Arma has all the electronics, other than the motor, of course, all in this one spot so that if you need to fix something, you can just remove four screws from the bottom. And that's just for the, uh, to hold the servo saver up once it's mounted. But um, four screws on the bottom and you pull this right out from the vehicle. So what's unfortunate about this is it is a little bit difficult to get all the wires in there and then place the cap on, um, but I'm gonna go ahead and install it now. I will eventually get a fan uh, for that motor just for, for some extra peace of mind. We'll see how it runs without it first, but I've got a fan on the X-Max um, and it's the same motor. I don't think I ever really need it, but I'm gonna have all the temperature sensors on and we'll see how it runs without it first and then decide from there. But if I do end up getting a fan, it'll end up being ran off of the receiver, and so I'll have to open this back up. But let me go ahead and get this mounted, and then we'll start working on the motor. So you know that screw that's been falling out <laughs> throughout this video? I'm sure you guys have seen. Um, well, that came out of this steering link, and I was very careful to make sure that I didn't lose this. Um, actually unscrewed it from here. That's where the steering link connects to. Um, but when I went to connect it back together, I noticed that you put the screw in and it just falls right through. Um, I don't know what the deal is. All right, you know what guys? I'm going to absolutely bet that there was a nut in here right in this slot. So you can see there's a slot above the bottom portion and you can see the tip of the tool right there. I bet you I'm losing a nut somewhere. All right, you guys, so in this mess of a garage, I cannot find that little uh, nut to fit in there. So I had a couple of these M3 nuts, but then I was like, oh, wait a minute, I've got some locking, uh, locking nuts. So it's got a little bit of nylon on the inside of the threads. Grabbed one of those, inserted them right into here, screwed it down, worked out great. So maybe one day while I'm sweeping, I'll run into it. But for now, that's gonna work out just fine. It is motor time. So we're using the 56 series mount, Loctite, not red, okay. Loctite blue, these two here. And then we should, yeah. So we've got these two screws, let's go on the top, and then we should have one for the bottom. Let's double check, this is just the other spur gear, but we're gonna keep what's in there 
currently here. Oh yeah, that's perfect. Make sure these wires are pointing straight up as far as how we're gonna mount it. Lock tight. All right, so on the motor side, or on the mounting side, I'm gonna go ahead and take that side plastic plate off so we can slide the motor on a little bit easier. Let's go ahead and slide the motor on. That way we can see roughly where we need to put our pinion. So hopefully you can see the spur gear right in here and the pinion is gonna be centered right on there. So we'll go ahead and Get one of our grubs. At this point, we're not setting the mesh yet. We're just uh, tightening the pinion down. Once we got the pinion lined up as close as we could to the spur, made sure that was centered up. Then we went in, tightened down both grubs. I used a longer grub screw on the part that's gonna be attached to the flat part of this shaft, and then a shorter one right here where it's screwing down onto a curved part. This uh, motor's only got one flat spot, so by using one longer one and one shorter one, it ends up being pretty flush here. So we're gonna go in and set our mesh. We don't want this to be super tight. We want to loosen this up a little bit. Now you can go in and do the sheet of paper trick where you go in, put a sheet of paper in between the spur and the pinion push that together and then tighten it down and then unwind the motor to bring the piece of paper out. Um, but I like to do this by hand and by sound. So I'm gonna go ahead and set the mesh and then I will put the two screws up top and there should be one screw underneath to make sure this motor doesn't move at all. One more quick thing, depending on the size of your pinion, um, you may have the part that screws down onto the shaft on the inside where you would use that little gap right here to tighten the grub screw down. But you can see this part is just so large, I needed to screw it down from that side. So no big deal. It's like for this bottom one, I actually should have started there because there's a slot here where this slides forward and back. You guys will know in the future, definitely do this underside first, get the screw all the way through this slot so that this can slide forward and back. And then do the top ones last. We got A, B, C perfectly over here. A, B, and C. Let's get these turned. All right, looks good there. Now let's see if this sensor wire would go. Oh yeah, that reaches no problem. I think with the motor in, that completes this build. It actually wasn't too bad. Um, most of the electronics, of course, you know, get installed right away, right there. Connect the motor. You know, if you're not running a fan right away, this is it. Um, I do like to protect my sensor wires in this wire loom. And mostly because I like that these motors can run censored at such a low RPM. It reduces or actually eliminates a lot of the cogging. Um, but if these aren't secured down very well, um, just having that completely, you know, either come off or even slightly loose results in a sensor loss warning. So what I like to do, like I said, do the wire loom and then try to secure it in place, especially right at the connection point. So you can see here, there's a little bit of slack, right? So that it's not, you know, constantly pulling on those uh, pins there. But then right here, it's really zip tied down so that it doesn't move. And then same thing kind of over here, there's a little bit of slack where it's connected into the ESC, but really tight right here. So um, this, you know, if this pops up, totally fine, but it's supposed to be tucked down right there. Clears the, uh, the steering servo. So everything's good, it's all finished. So with that, the build is actually done. Um, I'm gonna get some batteries charged up. I'll turn this on tomorrow and do a quick little run for you guys so you can see everything working. I actually put the Castle Bluetooth link 
in the vehicle as well. Um, I don't think I showed that part to you guys, but that way I can go ahead and get everything set up and then run it. And the next video you guys see from me, is gonna be a first run of this Creighton 8S EXB. I'm really excited. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Take care.